the idea with our meeting tonight is um, really just to get a conversation going around uh, Anami, what you and I have been speaking about over the last seven years, um, and just putting a little bit of context around that with regards to the two entities that we're working with at this point, how they are related, um, in terms of what are we building, and, um, and where is this heading? So tonight in the session, we have Anami Brevere, who is the chairperson of the shift and also a director uh, within Meritus International. Um, we have Sibu Sisu and Tuli, who sits here tonight as a young entrepreneur within the creative environment. And he has, he's one of those small, the small percentage of the small percentage people that's already doing something. That's beginning to see something around uh, why they are on earth. They're beginning to smell what's going on with around their assignment in life and they really he's really uh, pushing forward and doing things and and for this discussion uh, Sibu Sisu is sitting here as a young change agent in the making with a dream and a vision of how the youth can actually begin to rewrite the narrative for the country and myself I'm sitting here tonight as um, probably uh, with one or two hats. The one hat would be as the uh, developer around the change agent program for the youth. And the second hat would be as the chairperson of Meritus International, which has a specific role and function. So I'm gonna kick the meeting off, ask a few questions, and then I'm gonna leave it open so that we all can participate in the discussion. And please feel free um, to bring up points that you feel is very relevant. I think the discussion will take us in directions that would um, uh, kind of push us to what the next more important thing is. So Anami, without further ado, I'm gonna start with you. And my question to you is based on where we are at, can you give us a little bit of background, uh, who we are and what are we building? Yeah, thank you, Inc. It's a privilege to explain that. And I want to start with context always, um, with regard to our positions, uh, a seat that you take up in authority, a seat that you take up in a mandate after you have full clarity and understanding of what your purpose is and your appointment. <clears throat> so explaining it, how you've introduced us, um, my first hat is always um, as the executive director at Meritus International. <clears throat> and uh, there I function of the past seven years, what we received seven years ago as a team, you, me, and JD XT and our third uh, director and partner was the concept of a HPIN. Now a HPIN defined is called as a high potential impact node. <clears throat> Typically a high potential impact node would be what Cebu Sisu is bringing to the table. The, the industry of the creatives with a initiation platform for that industry of uh, creatives, which is Suwetu, where they want to build capacity and from where they first want to launch this initiative. So typically, I would say Sibu Sisu and his team is, is called a HPIN for us. And Meritus looks at people first, then the processes that assist people to unlock tools within technology or, a, you know, tool sets like what the shift is bringing. And clearly, we have progressed from Meritus as an initial um, initiative, which actually means merit us. It's a meriting function. It's a functional entity. And seven years is certainly a long time. <clears throat> um, what happened in the seven years is that we clearly understood that the people component of Meritus is a process on its own with people comes first and the people function we've dedicated to our nonprofit, which is the shift. The shift is also a public benefit organization. It's for the benefit of people. And in the shift, <clears throat> I function as the chairperson in the shift. And my function in the shift is to be an independent, independent objective chairperson, looking at governance compliance and to the total structure of it. I cannot be involved in the daily 
functionalities of the shift where somebody like you is taking the lead in the shift with its tool set and to build and to capacitate it. The same goes for Hink in his capacity as chairperson and meritus. He cannot be in the daily activities to build it where it's my function and role and JD's function and role to build it and capacitate meritus. <clears throat> so this is just clear definition of how we evolved in the seven years. We started with a merit us function first, and then we've dedicated the people component in it to the shift. And that's how we come together. And uh, I'm excited. You know, we have many other HPIN um, sort of identified. Uh, we've been working for many years with some of these HPINs and with their leadership. And our leadership dedication is to unlock kingdom understanding and kingdom leadership with regard to mandate, with regard to purpose, and with regard to true identity, your personal brand identity, your calling, who you are, and why you're on this earth. And, you know, we've learned in the years that we've been working with some of these projects or these h pro projects in the h identified, the more you get into the clarity of the individual and the people first, the easier the projects become. So, <laughs> but it's processes and it, and we bring the tool sets of technology. I have been talking too much and I think this is sort of in a summary of how we fit as a team. Thank you, Anami. Um, I'm really excited, you know, it's, it, I, I cannot believe that, you know, seven years have gone just like that and here we, yeah. we are. And if I think back, Seven years ago, we were sitting here on my stoop and we got these downloads and we wrote it down. And a lot of it, Sibu Sisu, when we got it, it was like, what is this? What's this all about? It's like a download. It's like something you downloaded on a hard drive. You looked at it and it didn't make a lot of sense at that point in time. And seven years later, this is really just opening up. It's, it's becoming real. Suddenly we understand its context. It's been, break, uh, been broken open and it's been revealed actually to us mm -hmm. what this was about. So thank you for sharing that, Anami. Um, Sisu, Sisu, I want to go to you next and I want to ask you, when you listen to what Anami is saying and, and, and what this is all about, and you've walked a little journey now with us, it's not a very long time, but, but I'm sure you, you have a sense of, of what we're busy with, of what you're busy with and how you see this coming together. Um, why do you think uh, this is an important discussion when we think about the future of the country? Thank you very much for the introduction and also thank you very much for the invitation to be able to participate in such a well-renowned well -renowned, uh, uh, platform and um, uh, an organization with such a high potential to impact a lot of people in the world that really need um, a new beacon of hope. My interaction with the shift, number one, and the mandate um, that was bestowed upon me was the fact that I understood very clearly that um, the world, or actually the universe, was at a particular position in time where it needed a new establishment of clarity, a clarity which was set where people with the right intent would interact with a world from a new perspective and with a new intention. I believe that there is a lot of people who have tried to do good and the good was distorted by corrupted means because the initiatives which they were connecting to were already corrupted and what predates existence is the fact that we've already been disconnected to our self or personal humanity. And I believe that there is a serious need for people to get back to that understanding of moving away from materialism and remembering that they are spirits before their pursuits. Um, so when I came across the shift, and I'm glad that um, Aunt Enemy mentioned the, the aspect of merit associated to deed, and um, there's a new word that I just had uh, come across, which is meritocracy, 
right? So we're we're coming at it. In, we're coming towards um, how words have become definitive to 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 how human beings are governed and the interchangeable relationship between different structures has has now been reborn. And I think looking at the time that COVID-19 has, 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 has forced us to introspect, has forced us to, to do away with the, the systems and services that no longer serve humanity, I believe that it is now, a, it, it, it has now become an invitation for us to start um, adjusting or readjusting our, our frame of reference. And, what I've I've learned through the experience of, of some of our meetings is that um, it is time for a shift, and not everybody's going to really um, like the way that the shift is going to recalibrate things in the universe or recalibrate things in in our communities, in our societies, in our families, in our immediate relationships, in our external relationships. But it's very necessary to to tick all the boxes of understanding the things that we are not. I, 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 I fairly believe that it's easy to, to aspire to want to now start innovating and building from anew, but I think it's also important to, to, to unlearn the negative habits, you know, I, and especially as a young person, I think we've, we've become very unfiltered to towards things that that don't serve us um, in a proper in a proper way or in a proper function. So we are creating out of of of, of anger for for, for being um, uh, suppressed from creating the things that we were inspired to create through what we have been influenced by. Which is not necessarily saying all the things we are influenced by are good and not all of those things are negative, but um, if we look at it properly, we are creating in a system where the, the, the utilization of what we're creating is not really directed towards the function for the greater good of mankind. It's more so just a distraction of mankind. So in the creative in industry where my age pin would be um, prioritized, such as the creative economy, Let's look at the factors of the, the creative economy. We're looking at content. We're looking at um, production. We're looking at uh, marketing. We're looking at distribution, consumption of content, and we're looking at archiving of content. The principal notion of understanding the content we're consuming is not based on how do we better humanity, but more so of how do we sell the fastest or the latest product? How do we make sure that... Um, the shelves are empty and the houses are full. People have so much stuff in their household that they don't even need, you know, based on what is being marketed or advertised. And they don't actually understand their connection to these things. Now, what that does then, it increases the waste. You know, people are, are, are consuming more of the things or, or, or accessing more of the things that they don't need, which increases our waste. At, um, our waste um, dis disposal. And that then also creates another problem because it increases on pollution. So it's a, it becomes a ripple effect because people are, are, are not socially aware of the impact of their consumption. So, you know, I'm starting to also understand why um, becoming chosen to become a change agent is an important respons responsibility, not for the merit associated in recognition, but for the merit associated in making sure that at least my contribution of a changed mind can better society in, in a little bit of, in a little way. Oh, that is a very good input. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think what, one of the things that kind of stands out for me and that is really exciting to me is the fact that you mentioned the issue around change agents. And um, from that perspective, I think uh, we we need to do things differently. You know, there's a saying that if you continue to do the same things, you're going to get the same results. And to think any different is insanity. So we're really looking at to do things different, not just for the sake of doing it different, but we need different results. I think if we look at what's going on around us in society, in family, if we see the impact of fatherlessness within our society, 
and it is across society. It shows up everywhere. And we begin to look at um, the inability of people to not just wanting a change, but really uh, moving to the next step, which is to really have a desire for change. And then once they've got that desire for change, not to stop there, but to go to the next step, which is they actually know how to change. And once they know how to change, they go to the following step, which is they apply and execute. And it begins to change their daily activities. It begins to shift their mindset. It has an impact on their heart set. And they begin to apply a different lifestyle. And, and what I find very um, uh, important is that our change agents will not just be individuals that can do that within themselves, but they will also have the ability to actually do that for people that are around them. In other words, begin to influence their families and bring that ability, that capability to their community, bring that capability to their industry, bring that capability to their city. We really need to expand our thinking in terms of the vision, bring that capability to the nation, bring that capability to the continent. We really need young people. And I believe that the young people are not just the answer. They don't just carry something. They actually are the answer. Within them, within their hearts and minds lie the solutions to address our economic, our socioeconomic challenges and opportunities. They need to bring it to light. Um, yeah, that is very exciting to me. In, in this discussion. Thank you for that. So Anami, I wanna come back to you and I wanna ask you, you mentioned a little bit around um, the shift. You talked a little bit about Meritus, about the history and how we function. Um, I would like to ask <laughs> the question that kind of defines me more. And that is, why are we doing this? From your perspective and from your experience up until now, why are we taking this journey? Why do this? Um, I would say we're not rebels without a cause. I would say we're rebels with a cause. And rebels in the good sense, sense of it. Um, definitely, I think why we came together, the three of us seven years ago, is because we said we can't continue with the status quo. Uh, we saw the youth Subisisu, suffering. We saw community suffering. We saw the world suffering. and you know, the intent of the world suffering was not it, because for so much God loved this earth, this world, that he sent his son. And we understood what his son has came to do. You know, he came to demonstrate, and he said, you will do better and more than me. So the h -pin concept definitely is about demonstration, how to demonstrate the new, how to demonstrate the innovative and it's a it's a it's known that there is a reality like systemic ex exclusion the systems that is making the world functioning that is around the world all those systems are excluding innovativeness it's excluding especially ground root innovation um the contamination of the systems that's created also excludes um relief and alleviation to grassroots and to, to innovation and also to where thoughts, pure thoughts of creativity is. And it's not just in the creative sphere or the creative industry. It's also, which I'm, you know, originated from. It's, that's why I so easily associate with you. But my passion drove from creative industry to, to the food security industry. And that encompasses... Um, everything, because if you can bring these two, which is my heart, together, the creative industry and food security industry, you can unlock at grassroots level a new norm. And, uh, and I'm so thankful that, that by grace it all came together. The same goes for, for all the waste that you were talking about, Sibu Sisu. The global waste is an issue, it's a problem. Emissions is a problem. We're killing this planet. And we have to reinvent it. And I think, I think that's why we came together. This is, this is why we are there, is not to take the status quo, 
to be the rebels with, with the cause, but to be the obedient rebels back into the first blueprint and idea and the restoration of what was given, how to work and live on this planet, mm -hmm. how to responsibly unlock creativity, mm -hmm. creation, so that there's growth and there's good on this planet and that we can actually let the people of this earth excel. Because here where I, we live, we daily see evidence of exclusion. It's not about ex exclusion. It's about community. It's about coming together. It's unlocking, breaking open systems, creating new systems, being clever about it, bringing out artificial intelligence. Um, and I think intelli more intelligence into it so that there's a new system for this world. And when you open up it through communication and media, you bring truth, you bring light. So I'm excited about the time it's taken us because we've matured and very important. This is not for us. This is a generational unlocking mandate that we have. We are not to, to take it for ourselves. This is for CBCC, your children's children's children. We want to go for grace for the fifth generation to unlock all this. And this is where we're standing. I, that's for me clear. I, and you know what? The line has been drawn in the sand. The fight is on. <laughs> we're going to mm. change it and we're going to make it happen. Mm. No, that is very exciting. I, I think the, the words that you use there that really catches my attention is going back to the original blueprints that were given. Um, when Adam was given the blueprint of his Eden in the garden, and he was given instruction on what to do there. Um, we're going back to that original blueprints. And, and that's just part of the downloads that we've been given. And we are very privileged and I would say humbled in that we have and can play our role within this. Yet on the other hand, um, we have to be responsible with what we've been given. And that responsibility requires uh, an initiation it requires an action and this is from my perspective why the change agent thinking the change agent heart set and the change agent mindset skill set and tool set is really so important because um, we, we we really need a different way of belief and thinking and skills in order for us to begin to shape a new and a better uh, society or to reshape back into the original pattern, to, to bring that understanding to people, to the leaders in our communities. One of those leaders, Sibu Sisu, we see as you. And I want to ask you the question, Sibu Sisu. When you think of the youth in South Africa and you begin to let your mind play around the future vision for the country, can you share a bit your heart with regards to what do you see, especially within your area of influence? Um, I, I understand that, that whoever tells the stories in the nation, they shape the narrative and uh, they, they create the conversation in, in what's happening on a daily basis. And um, I realize that, and, and this is to the detriment of maybe the church, that the church have been a little bit behind in terms of... Um, maximizing the technology that is available of in the day you know to to bring the message to bring to 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 bring that good news to the world uh, it's always been a little bit behind and the problem with that is is that 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 the media today the tools in media today because we didn't take a hold of it is now in the hands of other people who shapes the narrative and who decides what we can see and what we can't see and we are now subjected to their value system and what they want to uh, create and where they want to lead and take things. Uh, and that is problematic. Um, so, Sibu Sisu, can you talk to us a little bit about the youth, the vision for the country from your perspective within media and how you want to shape the narrative, please? Uh, thank you for that. And um, just to reiterate what has been said, I really believe that before we have visions for countries, we must 
understand what our spiritual vision is. Because you're right when you say that now, um, the tools that we've, we've, we've been exposed to in regards to how content reaches us, we've got this new thing of trying to keep up with the Joneses in regards to our delivery. And the church has never needed to change its message. The reason why it's so easy to, to, to distort the word is because now the church wants to make it look like popular. Now the word needs to mm. be adapted to the new cultural themes or the new mm. forms of expression. And it mm. looks like, and it associates like all mm. the things that are actually negative. And we're doing yeah. that because we want people to come to, to the core essence of the word. But that's not how it should be because the word stays absolute, it's truth. And truth does not need to be justified. Truth does not need to be perpetuated. And truth does not need indoctrination. Truth is, it's, it's something that no, no longer needs the presence of no follow. Because I think the, 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 the worst thing we can ever do is make somebody feel right for doing the wrong thing. Wrong is wrong. And we should no longer create a ladder where it is, is like, no, you can get away with it. And don't worry, tomorrow we'll fix it. What should happen is people should actually understand there are consequences to the results you're doing. And the new world that actually should come should be a world which understands good is good, wrong is wrong. Good is rewarded, bad is punished. And they should not be an, interme they should not be an, an interlink where we're saying, there is middle class. We are understanding that now in Africa, there is no middle class in Africa. South Africa is one of the very few places which have a middle class. You go to Nigeria, you go to Kenya, you go to Congo, you go to Ethiopia, you go to Malawi. There is no such thing as a middle class. You either have the extremely rich or you have the extremely impoverished. And those are the types of things that need to make us understand that guys, we have forgotten humanity. We have completely disregarded where there are other human beings concerned. How can somebody be driving a Rolls Royce in a church where he's asking people who live in, in, in shanty towns and, and he's taking their last money and he's now flying to China or now he's flying to wherever, he's a fugitive. But these are still people who are allowing this per person or this perpetrator of a gospel to still exist or inhabit the same space as them. These are narratives where these are the imprisonments or the results of imprisonment psychologically that our people are facing. And these are African peoples because the narrative of the context of the story is broken or the narrative of, 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 of the definition of the story has been, has been turned into something for profit. Now we don't have profits. Now we have profits, you know? So, so those are the different types of, 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 of things that I would understand need to be fixed, which, is, which goes back to the first sentiment, which is the, 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 the vision is a process of unlearning. Before we adapt anything new, people need to go through a shift of unlearning the 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 misconduct that they that they already feel it's 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 it, it's okay to live with you know it's okay to live with a traffic cop asking you for a cold drink it is okay to live with a government official asking for compensation to do what their their their, their, their duty is it is okay for someone in the bank to 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 allow for financial crimes to take place, you know? And, and these mm. are the types of things that we need to start looking at in a way where it's not the sensitivity, but it is a deep frustration. And this is, it's not saying frustration needs to get angry and start burning things and protesting. We need to start understanding that our civil duty is not to destroy. 
There are ways to communicate to be heard. There are ways to collaborate with people and not start bringing up um, 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 you know, these, these, these situations of, of, of social discord or unrest just to prove a point, because that is our infrastructure we're destroying. That is, we're setting ourselves back. And it's not about saying that if I am seen with the white person, now I am a sellout. Or if you are seen with the black person, you are now using a black person as a front. There is a, there is a time where people need to understand before you're a color, before you're a sex, before you're a transgender, before you are whatever description or new definition there is now, you are a human being. People need to be reminded of humankind. We need to forget the other titles that we've created and the other, the, the other descriptions of individualization. And we need to just remember that all of us Com compose of a greater humanity. And what is the vision for that humanity? I, I, I feel like it's a bit premature for me to, to state such a big, um, uh, my internet connect connection is a bit unstable, but it's fine. I feel like it's a bit premature to, to overstate such a big um, responsibility, but I would say that number one, it's about unlearning the miseducation of humanity and of the self. And number two would be, you know, like literally getting people more together. I think there's so much more we have to learn about one another. I think there's so, so many areas of, of, of compassion that, that can be shared, you know, and, and we, should, we should always look at, not even youth, we should always look at children between the ages of zero to three years old. And we should relearn the innocence between that area because those kids and, and those humans and those souls do not see the, 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 the differences that we are, are, are breeding them into. And I just think that it, it, is, it is about time we start unlearning this superior complex or, 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 or whatever nonsense that people have created to, 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 to impose on, 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 on the living standards. Mm, that's very good thinking. Um, you, you mentioned something about the younger children and that kind of really stirs my heart. Um, and it's an issue that lies very close to me. And that is, um, you know, I've been thinking and researching this topic of fatherlessness now for a while. And the impact of that in terms of where do you start? It's almost a chicken egg scenario. You know, do you start with the parents? Do you start with the children? And at the end of the day, um, we uh, feel mandated in the shift to actually start with, with young people um, and spend a, a tremendous amount of time with them to do exactly what you mentioned. And that is to unlearn, unlearn those bad that toxic thinking, unlearn that toxic heart sets, um, the belief systems that people have and that has been exposed to. Um, and often without even being aware of it, because this is just what they used to and this is what they've been born into and this is what they just kind of was exposed to their whole life. And, and it's really a, a shift from, from where you are to where you're supposed to be, what God sees when he looks at you what he had in mind, what he has in mind, when he looks at you, what he sees. And it's really helping people to come to that truth. So I, I, I agree with you, Sibu Sisu. I think the starting point of this is truly a spiritual experience and not just spiritual in the sense of becoming spiritual. It's really a, a shift back from and a connection back to your creator. Um, you know, the creator of a thing knows the purpose of the thing best. Uh, everybody else has opinion, have, has opinions on it. Um, I can tell you what I think about what your purpose is, but it's just an opinion because I didn't create you. I don't know what, what was placed within you, how you were woven together because a father in heaven says that he knew you before the foundations of the world, that he has woven you together in your mother's womb. He says that he has predestined you to live according to his purpose. He says things like you've been created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he has predestined, which means that before time began, 
He already finished you, wrote your scroll, your book was written, and then he sent you to earth with everything in you that is necessary to go and do that thing that he has created you, that mission, that mandate on it, that uh, assignment that he has for your life, and it has to do with his plan and it has to do with him. It's never really us. I must say that a big shift for me was to move away from me, myself, and I in terms of purpose. It is so easy to step into that trap where my purpose become more important than anything else. And what am I then doing different? I'm then just a glorified, self-centered person who actually knows why he's here, but, but you are abusing your purpose because it was never given for you. It is always for someone else. A fruit tree's fruit is never for itself to eat. It's always for other people to eat from it. And our purpose, our mandate, our calling, our mission in life is very similar to that. It keeps us humble and it gives us perspective in terms of, of uh, how we live and where we go. Um, yeah, our time is running out. So I, I'm going to ask maybe Anami, uh, maybe a final point that you want to add to this in terms of what we've been discussing and going forward. Anything you would like to add, please? Yeah. I. Uh... I definitely want to add with regard to, yes, so the focus is on us. It's on what can we do, um, but who are we to do it for? And for me, it's very simple. It's definitely, and I want to give it the deficient definitions I've been searching for. So if we say it's for the afflicted. Now, English being my second language, I had to go and relook what what does afflicted mean? Who is the afflicted? It's those in trouble. It's those in pain. It's those that have an illness and those that are unhealthy. And if you just think about all the waste in society and you just think of all the, the pain in society, we already have a purpose and a mandate just to start helping the afflicted. Yes, it's also for the fatherless. And from, you know, years of walking the path with you, Inc., you cannot start to understand fatherless unless you address the renewal of the mind, which Sibu Sisu, you've been talking about, the reset of the mind. Because a fatherless person doesn't understand the first priorities of order, structure, and of the true wealth of life itself. Then also orphan, what is an orphan? An orphan is a child deprived. It's those deprived, those that, do, that doesn't have access to love. And if you look at afflicted fatherless orphanage and orphan and the last one widow, you know, what is a widow? It's a destituted person. Uh, unless you go through a process of becoming a widow yourself or you witness one like I've witnessed my mom, you don't understand the word loneliness. And to fill the gap of all four of these dedications where we should be working in community and who we should be taking care of is the word love, the absence of love. If we cannot start speaking love, truth, light into these communities, through principles, order, structure, and renewal of the minds and the hearts, and you know, bring forth tools and enablement to alleviate. These are all words, but it's very, very strong words. And if you say you are a rebel with a cause, these are the words you should align yourself to and you should commit yourself to. Oh, my God, my God.